I was in the process of making a video about refraction when I saw Anthony Riley in one of many Nathan Oakley's hangouts about this topic share his infinite scientific wisdom about Fermat's principle and Snell's law. Let's hear what he said. Everybody needs to go and look at Fermat's principle on the trajectory of light and apply it to this thing called refraction by, cited by the ballers for bending light particularly bending light down because it doesn't do what if you actually look at what Fermat's principle on the trajectory of light actually is it isn't the same as what what what, what the ballers are arguing and it shows that the ballers are probably not being dishonest but they're definitely arguing from incredulity because they don't realize that it doesn't do what they say they do and it also they don't realize that it also um, doesn't bend down it bends up down left and right all directions Fermat's principle is where we need to be looking guys <clears throat> yeah, but that, that, that also contradicts um, the application of Snell's law because Snell's law, which doesn't even apply, but they apply it anyway. But when Snell's law applies, it says that when it hits a, um, a, a different medium, it'll bend into the medium if it's more dense or it'll bend away from it if it's less dense because that's what, that's what <clears throat> Snell's law does. So it should, bend, right, it should bend towards the normal, I think, because... If it's if it's hitting more dense, it's going to slow down. So yeah, but it's will. What, it's, I was, what I was the point I was about to make is if the light hits the angle and then goes either towards it or away from it, applying Snell's law, that indicates that it hasn't got the choice. The, it hasn't got the choice to decide about the path of least resistance, which is not what Fermat's principle says. Fermat's principle says it'll take the light of it'll take the angle, which is like you know the quickest route through, indicating that it's got it has the choice when it can. It'll bend around. It, it'll avoid the the, um, the the more dense stuff and it'll be attracted to the less dense stuff. And that obviously is not what Snell's law says. Snell's law says it'll go through it and it'll bend which, whichever way is according to the density of the land, uh, the air it's hitting. Yeah. But the, what the point I was making was that if Fermat's principle about taking the least amount of time involves yeah. taking the, the, the path of least resistance rather than going through the more denser stuff, that implies that it will bend to avoid the, the more denser stuff, taking the path of least resistance. But Snell's law doesn't give the choice. Snell's law says if it goes into the medium, it will slow it will slow down, indicating that, that Fermat's principle isn't right because Fermat's principle indicates that it's taking the path of least resistance, well, which Fermat's you can't do path, unless it's got a consciousness, right? The, the, least time, the, short, the, the shortest time path. Yeah, that's right. But the path, well, yeah, the path of least resistance is the shortest amount of time. That I mean, I did interchange the phrase correct, uh, incorrectly. I agree, but that I was making the point that, in contrast to Snell's law, if it hits the denser air, it'll bend into it. And I'm like, well, well it'll, it'll, which Snell, one is Snell it? says it'll bend into the normal. So Snell's is saying, depending on what angle it hits the density, will tell you whether it's going to bend this way or that way. So it depends very much on the angle that it hits at. So I see why you're saying it's kind of contradictory, but Snell's actually has a detail in it that accounts for what you're saying. Yeah, but Snell's law also requires a hard medium change. It doesn't require um, what's the special phrase? An isotropic medium oh, change. It oh, requires I, I, a hard I, I, medium change. Sure. First, he suggests that light leaving a certain point has a totally free choice to choose the point where it will be arriving, basing that choice on the path of least resistance. After being corrected, he changed this in the path taking the least amount of time. But then still he's got it wrong. Fermat's principle is about light traveling from one given point through one or more different materials of different densities to another given point in the least possible amount of time. And then he states that Fermat's principle doesn't correspond with Snell's law because Snell's law is fixed and Fermat's principle suggests more than one possibility and more than one direction. So Anthony R Riley has single-handedly put all knowledge about optics at the dustbin. You wonder why the entire scientific community still is not aware of this contradiction between two basic principles behind the making of magnifying glasses, cameras, binoculars, spectacles telescopes 
and every other item that depends on the bending of light in order to work. Maybe there is no contradiction. Let's put this to the test. Let's assume these two points and the light beam traveling from point A to point B. We all know that the shortest and quickest route between two points is the straight line between these points. Now assume that the second point lies in another medium with a higher density, say glass, and the dividing plane is perpendicular to the light beam. Although the light is considerably slowed down by the glass, there is no possible shorter way through the glass than perpendicular to its surface, so the shortest and quickest way is still a straight line. Now we rotate the dividing plane, say 30 degrees. Now the path through the glass still is just as long, but now there rises the possibility to find another path that might be longer in total, but shorter through the denser medium and therefore shorter in time. After all, that is the essence of Fermat's principle. For instance, the path perpendicular to the dividing plane gives a shorter path through the glass. But to achieve this, it would have to follow a longer path through the air, which will take more time. There should be an equilibrium between taking the shortest possible path through the glass combined with the shortest possible path through the air, resulting in the shortest possible time. Let's assume that that would be this path. Let's calculate the time it takes the light to follow each of these four paths. Because we are talking of the speed of light, which is very high, we assume the thickness of the glass to be 200 meters, and the distance from point A and point B to the surface of the glass also to be 200 meters each. This this doesn't affect the outcome, only the time differences will be a little greater. Light travels through air with a speed of, of 300 million meters per second. Light travels through glass with a speed of 200 million meters per second. In the first model, it takes the light beam 1.67 to the power of minus 6 seconds. The total length of the path is 400 meters. In the second model it takes the light beam also 1.67 to the power of minus 6 seconds. The total length of the path is also 400 meters. In the third model it takes the light beam 1.75 to the power of minus 6 seconds. The total length of the path is 437.8 meters. In the fourth model it takes the light beam 1.66 to the power of minus 6 seconds. The total length of the path is 402.8 meters. So the light will take path 4, although it is not the shortest path, because that path takes the least amount of time, and that's what light is supposed to do according to Fermat's principle. Now how did I construct path 4? By trial and error, and with the use of Snell's law. It took some fiddling, but I found an angle of incidence of 36.2 degrees, combined with an angle of refraction of 22.868 degrees to fit the drawing. And lo and behold, the path according to Snell's law turns out to be the optical shortest, that is to say, it takes a light beam the shortest possible amount of time to travel from A to B. You can try all other possible paths, as much as you want, but you will never find a path along which it would take a light a shorter time to travel than along path 4. So Fermat's principle doesn't contradict Snell's law at all. Both principle and law speak of the same phenomenon and lead to the same outcome. All the rest that Riley has said about Fermat's principle and Snell's law, like that Snell's law can't be used for light traveling through an anisotropic medium, is also nonsense, as I will show in my next video.